In this era of hashtag Me Too, there's a lot of discussion about how to speak out against sexual harassment and assault, as well as how to prevent it. But State Representative Lindsay Sabadosa wants to take stronger action. She's proposed anti-harassment legislation that would crack down on the practice among legislators. She spoke with me about the details. The workplace sexual harassment bill actually pertains to the state house itself, so it is a very specific piece of legislation. It was filed last session by Senator Jamie Eldridge in response to events that had occurred uh, within the building. And this session, uh, you know, I had talked to Senator Eldridge back in September about the legislation. We'd kind of gone round about it, um, about whether it was going to be refiled, if it needed to be refiled, if it was the appropriate vehicle to address um, allegations of assault and harassment within the building. And then, of course, you know, when the news story broke on Wednesday about allegations within the building, Wednesday of last week, uh, it felt really appropriate. And so I called his office immediately and I said, you know, so I would really like to be on this. He, Do you mean allegations related to Representative McMurdy? They technically didn't happen in the building. They happened actually at UMass, right, the they, legislative exactly, boot camp. But they involve legislators. But the legislation yes. covers that. It does indeed, yes. And so, you know, I, I spoke to Senator Eldridge and he said, I'm not planning on refiling it, but Senator Becca Rausch, who is a new senator from Norfolk County, um, she had taken it over. And so I reached out to her and we filed it uh, fairly quickly. We filed it by 3 o'clock the next day on so Thursday. Let's dig into some of the specifics of sure. it. So formally, it's called an act promoting equality and respect in the legislature. Yes. Um, and it would create an independent council that would look at the any sexual misconduct allegations. That I get. Yes. But then there's another piece. It says, quote, intersectional, excuse me, it says, quote, intersectional identity-based discrimination. What does that mean? Well, I think it it really tries to get at the heart of the fact that we no longer live in a society where everything is binary. So we're trying to be make sure that this legislation works for what the legislature looks like right now and what it could look like in the future as well. So maybe not just women who say that there are allegations against men or men who say there are allegations Absolutely, against men, but yes. just covering all gender right. uh, gender discussions. And that was one of the things that had changed in the legislation. We sort of went through the language between Wednesday and Thursday and tried to figure out, and this is what we do with all pieces of legislation, right? We want them to not just be applicable for one session. We want them to work well into the future. So how do we look at the language and make it as forward thinking as possible? It's a really tall task, but that was one of the, the phrases that was entered after that. Something you told Politico, you said, quote, the building, meaning the state house, yes. I imagine, is a unique place with its own complexities and power structures. You need someone on the outside to make sure people feel comfortable coming forward to report issues. How would this legislation do that? Well, because this would take any investigations outside of the building. So right now what happens is you would have to file a complaint basically with leadership. And that can be really challenging if you're an incoming legislator or if you're a staff member or an aide where you are, you know, for better or worse, there's a hierarchical structure and it does make it hard for people to feel comfortable reporting. So this takes that outside. It allows the investigation to happen outside. Our hope is really that people are always going to feel comfortable coming forward and we know that hasn't happened in the past. And since this legislation has been filed, I cannot tell you the number of people who have reached out who said this would have made a difference when I worked at the State House. Really? more so People who are currently serving or people who served previously? People who have served and people who worked in the building. So looking at that, the Boston Globe did a deep dive looking at sexual harassment in the State House back in 2017. Yes. So here we are two years later. That report, more than a dozen women had come home, yes. come, come forward and spoken with Yvonne Abram about the allegations or about things that they experienced. For you as a new state rep coming in, knowing or having a sense that mm -hmm. this is still going on, how is that for you working in that environment? Well, I knew that that was the environment I was going into. I didn't go into this with my eyes closed. I knew that we were going into a very male-dominated building um, where a lot of leadership is male. I mean, that's thankfully starting to change a little bit. But, you know, this this was not a surprise. It was a surprise to me that, this, that the issue came up quite as quickly as it did. Um, but frankly, you know, 
there are things we need to continue to address over time. The fact that the Boston Globe covered this in 2017 is great. It means that we had a lot of work to do. Some rules were implemented, but we didn't go far enough. So this legislation is to try to go far enough. I've heard from people who worked in the building as far back as 2005 who, who talk about this culture. So this is, this is long standing, and this is really a conversation starter. Given that the House of Representatives ele re-elected Speaker DeLeo to lead yes. the body yet again, he's now the longest serving yes. uh, House leader in history, mm -hmm. but the House has always had a white man calling the shots. Well, for a long time, there were only white men in the House, and we're slowly trying to change that, right? That's part of this election cycle. But for you, is that something that you think needs to be looked at? I would absolutely love to see a female Speaker of the House, yes. But you voted for Reptilio this time around. There was no other option. I mean, we had the choice between voting for the Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate. So of the two, I would go with the current Speaker. But, you know, if the speaker decides to retire or if in the next session someone else comes forward, I think that we need to consider, we need to consider looking at having some diversity in leadership. You sort of hinted at that, I think, in a piece that you wrote for the Daily Hampshire Gazette. You said ultimately you voted for the speaker because to vote against him without telling him your concerns and giving him the opportunity to respond felt like it would have lacked integrity? Absolutely. I think that if you are going to vote against someone, especially, I mean, we're talking about a colleague here for all intents and purposes. You need to be honest with that person. You need to go to that person and say, these are these are my issues. These are the, these are the reasons that I'm uncomfortable with this vote. I really believe in being open and honest with all of my votes. And I, I hope that my piece in the Hampshire Gazette indicated that, that I tend to be very honest with my constituents about why I'm voting on things. I want to talk about some broader issues sure. where sort of national meets local. You you were the statewide organizer for the Women's March. I was one of the organizers, Right, yes. one of the local organizers yes. here. Two years later, do you think that that movement has been effective? Can you point to one thing that you think has been effective? I think that the movement has been effective particularly in getting people engaged in politics. So we've seen this happen on the state level in particular with some very major pieces of legislation that were introduced last session and didn't go through. For example, the Safe Communities Act. I think that we saw a lot of local engagement that we might not have seen in the past without organizations like the Women's March and many others really drawing people's attention to the fact that while on the federal level it may be difficult currently to see some real change on the state level we can and we had people you know from western massachusetts heading into boston to testify at record numbers we had letters to the editor we had postcard campaigns we had just people who day in day out focused on their on their state level government and i'm not sure that's something that has always occurred i think that we're seeing higher levels of engagement now is there a specific political action that we can point to and say oh because of the women's march we had this victory i'm not sure i mean we've you know the aca has not been rolled back that's that feels important i don't know if that's the result of the women's march but i believe it's the result of the energy that the women's march seeks to harness very quickly we have about 30 seconds sure. the senate has decided to form a committee to look at the impacts of the government shutdown here in Massachusetts? Should the House do the same thing? Um, I think so. My, my sole concern would be that once that committee is formed, the shutdown will end. I'm very hopeful that that will be the case because the shutdown is having devastating impacts, both in terms of housing, food security, you name it, in every single city and town in the Commonwealth. So, Are you hearing that from constituents? Absolutely. I have a lot of constituents who are very concerned, um, particularly around housing, people who have Section 8, if their um, vouchers are going to be honored, if they're going to be evicted. We have people who are worried about where their next meal is coming from. So. We're working really hard. My office is working really hard to make sure that we're answering all of those questions. A lot of times, you know, there are things that we can do to be helpful, so people should really reach out to us.